Renewable Energy Sources Introduction Modern societies consume huge amounts of energy for heating, transportation, electricity production and industrial use. Due to economic progress and the rising standard of living, the demand for energy is continually increasing. At present, the largest amount of energy we use is derived from conventional sources of energy, which are petroleum, gasoline and coal. These are non-renewable sources of energy which, sooner or later, will be exhausted. The production and use of energy derived from these sources create a series of environmental problems, the most serious of which, as we all know, is greenhouse effect. On the other hand, renewable energy sources are continually renewed by the cycle of nature and are considered to be practically inexhaustible. The sun, wind, rivers, organic materials such as wood and even household and agricultural waste are energy sources which are always available and are never exhausted. They are plentiful in our natural environment and they are the first sources of energy used by man almost exclusively. Until the beginning of the 20th century, when humankind turned to the intensive exploitation of coal and hydrocarbons. Turkey has considerable RES potential which can provide a practical alternative solution to meeting its energy needs. Wind energy, hydroelectric power, biomass, solar thermal systems, photovoltaic systems and geothermal energy are the most common types of renewable energy sources. Wind energy Wind energy is the kinetic energy of moving air. The uneven heating of Earth's surface by the sun causes the winds on a global scale. The temperature difference between the tropics and the poles drives the trade winds, which act as a giant heat exchanger to keep the equator from becoming even hotter and the poles from becoming even colder on a much smaller scale. Temperature differences between land and sea and between mountains and valleys often create strong breezes. The wind direction and speed are also affected by factors as the Earth's rotation, local topographical features and terrain roughness. The first wind-powered machine was for grinding, in other words milling, floor apparently in 7th century in Persia, operating on a vertical axis. Only after 5 more centuries that the familiar horizontal axis windmill appear in England. Windmills continued to be used until displaced by electric motors during the 20th century. But by that time, the wind was already being used to generate electricity. A horizontal axis wind turbine system could be divided into four basic subsystems. The rotor, the nacelle, the tower and the electrical controls and cabling. The rotor assembly may be placed either upwind or the tower and the nacelle. So, receiving wind unperturbed by tower itself or downwind of the tower, which enables self-alignment of the rotor with the wind direction, but causes the wind to be deflected and made turbulent by the tower before arriving at the rotor. The nacelle houses the turbines derived train and generator assemblies plus the yaw mechanism and any control components. The tower of wind turbine supports a nacelle assembly which may weigh many tons and elevates the rotor to a height at which the wind velocity is significantly greater and less perturbed than at ground level. Due to the wind shear effect, in areas with high terrain rawness, it's an advantage to have a tall tower since the rotor blades on turbines with relatively short towers will be subject to very different wind speeds when a rotor blade is in its top and bottom positions which will increase the fatigue loads on the turbine. Photovoltaics Photovoltaics or solar cells, as they are often referred to, are semiconductor devices that convert sunlight into direct current electricity. The term photo is a stem from the Greek phos, which means light. Volt is named for Alessandro Volta, a pioneer in the study of electricity. Photovoltaic then literally means light electric. Scientific investigation of the photovoltaic effect started in 1839 when the French physicist Henri Becquerel discovered the release of positive and negative charge carriers in a solid state when light strikes its surface. The first 
conventional photovoltaic cells produced in the late 1950s and throughout the 1960s were principally used to provide electrical power for Earth orbiting satellites. Photovoltaic systems have a number of merits and unique advantages over conventional and other non-conventional power generating technologies. Energy independence and environmental compatibility are two attractive features of photovoltaic systems. The fuel is free and no noise or pollution is created from operating photovoltaic systems. Photovoltaic systems have no or few moving parts, are modular, easily expandable and even transportable in some cases. Photovoltaic systems can also be an attractive option in rural areas where no grid connection is available. The investment cost of a photovoltaic system are usually measured in price per peak watt. Peak watt is defined as the power output at standard test conditions. Prices for entire photovoltaic systems vary widely and depend on a variety of factors including system size, location, grid connection, technical specification and others. The major factors influencing the investment cost of photovoltaic turnkey systems are The size of the system being installed, a larger system may be cheaper per kilowatt, while a small system may be more expensive. The number of photovoltaic systems being installed at a time. For example, a house builder installing systems on a group of houses can expect a price nearer the bottom of the quoted range than individual householder. Whether the system is being installed while the building is being built or as a retrofit to an existing building, if the system is being installed on a new building some savings may be made. The number of roof tiles that need to be purchased could be reduced. How difficult or easy it is to access the area where the photovoltaic system is being installed if the roof is a complicated shape or requires complicated scaffolding costs will be higher. The photovoltaic module type used. The most expensive systems are those that use semi-transparent glass modules in facades or conservatory roofs. Biomass Biomass is the biodegradable fraction of products, wastes and residues from biological origin from agricultural, forestry and related industries, as well as the biodegradable fraction of industrial and municipal wastes. Bioenergy can be chemical energy stored in solid, liquid or gaseous fuels, biofuels or any electric power derived from organic material or useful chemical product of biological origin. The energy value of vegetable biomass originally comes from solar energy through the photosynthesis. In the course of this process, carbon dioxide is absorbed and transformed into organic material by the plants. During conversion processes, for example combustion, Biomass releases its energy in the form of heat. Essentially, the use of biomass for energy is reversal of photosynthesis. Bioenergy is produced in the carbon cycle, during which majority of the released carbon content is removed from the atmosphere and later during the combustion returned back to it. By this way, the utilization of biomass for energetic purposes is environmentally friendly, as during its combustion, no additional carbon dioxide is generated. The biomass raw materials can be divided into further groups. Woody biomass includes forest and plantation wood, energy forest trees, plantation trees, wood processing industry byproducts, sawdust, fiber sludge, and used wood, demolition wood, used paper, and recovered construction wood. Biomass from fruits and seeds includes energy crops, energy grains, agricultural byproducts, shells, agro-industrial byproducts, oil extraction meal, rubbery byproducts, and unused material used vegetable oil. Herbaceous biomasses are energy crops, energy grass, energy whole cereal crops, agricultural byproducts, straw, agro-industrial byproducts, the gas, textile industry byproducts, and end-use materials, used cloths. There are also other biomasses and biomass mixtures like animal byproducts, manure, poultry waste, horticultural byproducts, bushes, agro-industrial byproducts, slaughterhouse house byproducts, bio sludge and end use materials, switch sludge. Biomass conversion processes In most cases, biomasses are not applicable for direct utilization and they need to be converted to solid, liquid and or gases fuel. There are three basic categories of biomass conversion technologies. The first one is thermochemical conversion like direct combustion, 
When the biomass is incinerated in the presence of oxygen to carbon dioxide and water vapor. Another way of thermochemical conversion is the gasification, which means the pyrolysis, the high temperature decomposition with the absence of oxygen of biomass. In this case, the product is syngase, which consists of mainly carbon monoxide, hydrogen and carbon dioxide. This gas mixture can be burned in gas turbine. The next category of biomass conversion is biochemical conversion. It includes the anaerobic digestion and the fermentation. During the first process, biogas is produced by bacteria with the exclusion of oxygen. It consists of methane, carbon dioxide and water vapor and it can be utilized for example in gas motors. In the fermentation process, yeast converts biomass to ethanol and carbon dioxide. The third category is the physico-chemical conversion, like biodiesel production by esterification. In this process, the molecules of vegetable oil is decomposed to smaller oil molecules. Biomass energy production A wide variety of technologies exist for energy production from biomass. By using these technologies, domestic and industrial heat electricity and fuels for transport can be produced. Wood for heating in domestic applications in its simplest form is carried out on open fires but this is very inefficient and results in high emissions of carbon monoxide and smog. In some countries of the European Union, biomass fire district heating is used extensively. The different cases fuels produced from biomass feedstock have similar utilization as a solid biomass fuels, however, their main parameters are different. For example, the product case from gasification can be utilized as the fuel and firing equipment, boilers, furnaces. To replace conventional transportation, drive concepts based on mineral oil biofuels are developed, such as biodiesel, rapeseed oil, ethanol, methane from biogas, or the synthetic or biomass to liquid fuels. One most widely applied power generation technologies is conventional steam cycle plant. In this technology, biomass is burned in excess of air to produce heat, which is in turn used to raise high pressure steam in a boiler. The energy stored in the steam is converted into electricity by expanding it through a turbine, which in turn drives an electrical generator. Power production from biomass can be also based on organic Rankine cycle process. During this process, biomass is burned in a thermal oil heater, the high temperature oil heats an organic medium, which evaporates and its steam runs a turbine and through that a generator. The technology of power production of biomass with a gas turbine is based on the expansion in a turbine of the hot flue gas produced during the combustion of biomass in the combustion chamber. Biomass Economics the main factors having an impact on biomass systems from economic point of view are the fuel cost, the plant size and applied technology, the utilization of the existing heat, the price of electrical energy and the yearly operating hours. The main costs are the investment cost and the operation and maintenance costs, which are the following ones, lease cost, personal cost, maintenance cost, operation cost and fuel cost which do exist, not as in the case of the other renewables, where the fuel is free. For the case of heat generation, the status of development of relevant technologies is mostly already commercial, available or established. On the basis of increasing capacity range, the heat production plants can be used for heating of individual and multiply houses, and for producing small communal and industrial heat supply. The average specific investment cost of these plants usually are between 150 and 200 euro per kilowatt. For the smallest units, the specific investment cost can be even higher. In the case of large communal and industrial heat supply systems and power stations, the specific investment cost is between 1000 and 2500 euro per kilowatt. As regards liquid biofuels, the initial investment of bioethanol plant is lower if it uses sugar crops as feedstock instead of wood because in this case the process requires less production steps. 
small hydropower plants. Water has been used for energy purposes for thousands of years. It has been used for motive energy in many parts of the world for at least 2000 years, primarily for grain milling. Water mills were constructed all over Europe and North America during the first decades of the Industrial Revolution to provide power for a variety of uses, from flax processing to textile spinning and weaving, from timber milling to woodworking. Hydropower is the most important energy source in what concerns no carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrous oxides or any type of air emissions and no solid or liquid vessels production. The hydroelectric power plant utilizes a natural or artificial fall of a river and enhances the main advantages comparing with other electricity sources, namely saving consumption of fossil fuel or firewood being self-sufficient without the need of imported components. Until the end of 19th century, hydropower was the first major source for generating electricity. Until cool, oil and later nuclear became more prominent. Still, hydropower accounts for around 20% of the world's energy generation with efficiencies over 70%. Small hydropower plants. The amount of power that a specific hydropower site can produce depends on its head, the height h through which the water falls and the flow rate q, the volume of water which passes across section of the river per second. The gross theoretical power available can be calculated by the following simplified relation. P equal 9.81 cross q cross h in kilowatt. However, energy is always lost when it's converted from one form to another. Small water turbines rarely have efficiencies better than 80%. Power will also be lost in the pipe carrying the water to the turbine due to frictional losses. A rope guide used for small systems of a few kilowatt rating is to take the overall efficiency as approximately 50%. Thus, the theoretical power of the above relation must be multiplied by 0.50 for a more realistic figure. Solar Thermal Systems Using energy from the sun to heat, water is one of the oldest uses of solar energy and principles of solar heat have been known for thousands of years. Some 200 years ago, the first known flat plate collector was made by Swiss scientist Horace de Saussure in 1767. Solar technology advanced to roughly its present design in 1908 when William J. Bailey of the Carnegie Steel Company invented a collector with an insulated box and copper coils. By the year 1941, nearly 60,000 units were sold, but the rationing of copper during World War II sent the solar water heating market into a sharp decline. Little interest was then shown in such devices until the worldwide oil crisis of 1973. This crisis promoted new interest in an alternative energy sources. As a result, solar energy has received increased attention. Today, solar water heating systems are being used for single-family houses, apartment buildings, schools, car washes, hospitals, restaurants, agricultural farms, and different industries. This is a diverse list of applications, but they all have one thing in common. They all use hot water. Owners of these buildings have found that solar water heating systems are cost effective in meeting their hot water needs all over the world. The generation of electricity from solar thermal energy requires higher temperatures than for heating, and therefore some kind of concentrating collector is required. The concentrating solar power systems, as these systems are known, consist of two parts. One that collects solar energy and converts it to heat, and another that converts heat energy to electricity, through a steam turbine or heat engine. Concentrating solar power systems can be sized in a wide range from village power, about 10 kW, to grid connected applications up to 100 MW. Some systems use thermal storage during cloudy periods or at night. Others can be combined with natural gas and the resulting hybrid power plants provide high value and dispatchable power. There are four main types of concentrating solar power systems, which differ as regards their mirror configurations. The parabolic trough concept. 
the Fresnel reflectors, the solar power tower, the solar dishes or parabolic dishes, dish slash engine units. Geothermal energy. Geothermal energy means energy stored in the form of heat beneath the surface of solid earth. The, in other terms, it can be said that geothermal energy is the part of earth's heat that can or could be recovered or exploited. The increase of temperature with that is called geothermal gradient. Its average value is about 2.5 to 3 Celsius per 100 meter. In Turkey, the geothermal gradient is almost one and a half times as high as the world average and represents one of the country's natural treasures. The geothermal energy has three main elements. The first one is the heat source, which can be the magma or the Earth's normal temperature in the given depth. The reservoir is the volume of hot permeable rocks which is generally covered by a layer of impermeable rocks and it's connected to a superficial recharge area. The third one, the fluid is generally meteoritic water in liquid or vapor phase which often carries chemicals and gases such as carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide. There are four types of geothermal energy sources. There are four types of geothermal energy resources. The hydrothermal resource, the geopressured resource, the hot dry rock and the magma. Geothermal energy utilization. Geothermal energy has three types of use such as shallow geothermal energy, heat pumps, direct use for heating or district heating and geothermal electricity production. High or intermediate temperature water and steam can be used for power generation but low temperature water is suitable only for heating purposes. Dry steam, flash steam, binary cycle and combined geothermal power plants can be distinguished by power range and characteristic reservoir temperatures. Dry steam power plants use dry saturated or superheated steam at pressures above atmospheric from vapor dominated reservoirs which can be fed directly into turbines. They are well developed, commercially available technologies with typical turbine capacities between 20 and 120 megawatt. Flash steam power plants use water dominated wet steam reservoirs in which most of high temperature geothermal resource is provided by pressurized water. Single or multiple flash steam plants are produce energy by evaporating depressurized liquid water into steam. The typical size of flash steam power plants varies between 5 to 100 megawatt. Binary power plants convert geothermal heat from low enthalpy water dominated hot water reservoirs into electricity. Binary power plants convert geothermal heat from low enthalpy water dominated hot water reservoirs into electricity. The typical size of binary power plants varies between 0.5 to 10 megawatts. Geothermal energy economics. The modified McKelvey diagram shows the classification of the geothermal energy sources on the basis of their accessibility. Typical project steps of a geothermal plant development are reconnaissance, prefeasibility, deep exploration, implementation and operation and maintenance. Geothermal projects typically have high upfront investment costs due to the need to drill wells and construct power plants and relatively low operational costs. Operational costs vary depending on plant capacity, makeup and slash or injection well requirements and the chemical composition of the geothermal fluids. The cost of geothermal projects can be divided into two main categories. The first one means the field cost, which includes surface exploration, drillings, field development and reservoir management. The other one is plant cost, which include machinery, equipment, design, engineering and civil works. The investment costs of geothermal power plant are composed of the following components. Exploration and resource confirmation drilling of production and injection wells, surface facilities and infrastructure, and the power plant itself. Heat pumps transport heat from a low to a high temperature level by using a working fluid with a much smaller energy input than the heat energy delivered at the higher temperature level. Heat pumps have several advantages. They consume less primary energy than conventional heating systems. This results also in the reduction of polluting gas emissions such as carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides. The fuel consumption of an absorption or gas engine heat pump is about 35% less than that of a conventional boiler. Heat pumps are more efficient 
because they use renewable energy in the form of low temperature heat. Industrial heat pumps are mainly used for drying processes, washing processes, heating of process water with the waste heat from a refrigeration system, pasteurization, space heating, steam production and evaporation and distillation processes as well. The supply temperature ranges of the application fields are significantly different as the table shows. At present, the installed cost of a heat pump is greater than that of a conventional oil or gas-fired boiler or basic electric heating, but the operating costs have to be less. The capital costs include design and project management fees, including feasibility studies, costs for application of building regulations, equipment costs, costs for the construction of an auxiliary system, and commissioning costs. The operation costs cover the fuel and maintenance costs. 